Tess Ingram. She joins us now uh, to speak from UNICEF's point of view, Tess. In terms of the children in northern Gaza, we've heard about children expiring from lack of food. Nizar Sadawi, our correspondent, about a month ago, watched a tiny baby die in its father's arms because it had no water to drink and no food. His mother, the baby's mother, was simply too weak to feed the child. And this keeps happening. So how stuck is an organization like UNICEF with its desire to help, but the restrictions placed upon it? We are stuck. We're doing everything that we can, but we're not doing anywhere near what we need to do because of these restrictions. It is devastating to be on this side of Gaza, I'm in Rafa now, and know that children are dying in the north and that we can't treat them with the supplies that we have here. That is the situation that we're in. We have the supplies and we just cannot get up as much as we need to. Does that mean that World Central Kitchen has become even more critical to Gaza? They say, World Central Kitchen, that they've delivered 37 million meals to the enclave since October the 7th. Yeah, World Central Kitchen has done an enormous job and they're an integral part of, of the food system here along with WFP and, and other agencies. Um, I'm not sure where what World Central Kitchen has delivered all of those meals, middle, south, north, but... Regardless, that amount of food into the Gaza Strip is incredibly important for a community that is on the precipice of a famine. Tess, what are the negotiations like? Do you know uh, between UN agencies and uh, Israel when any specialised agency, whichever one it may be, wants to enter the Strip? So uh, in terms of entering the north, we have to coordinate with the parties to get access to that area, and that starts days in advance before a mission uh, in order to make sure that we have the security assurances that we need to bring the aid up to the vulnerable children and families that so desperately need it. Can you give us an idea about what's happening in Rafa, this area where the Israelis have threatened to launch a ground operation? There are more than a million people there who have already been displaced. Do you have representatives down there? What have they been telling you? I'm in Rafa at the moment. Oh, I thought, um, I'm sorry, I thought you were in Amman in Jordan. My mistake. I'm in Rafa and um, I was here in January and the difference between the situation then and the situation now is, is just so visible. It's, it's um, heartbreaking. You can see it in the buildings. You can see it in the amount of waste and, and poor sanitation on the ground. You see it in people's faces. They're exhausted. They're hungry. Um, there's so many children running around um, looking very thin, not wearing shoes. Everybody that I talk to has the same question, which is, when is this going to end? When can I go back to my home? Yeah, Tess, thank you very much indeed. It's always really, really important that we hear from people like you who are right there and are meeting Gazans and know exactly what the situation is, having seen it through your own eyes. Tess Ingram, really appreciate it. Thank you.